Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box and I'm super excited to be bringing you a Halloween cookie tutorial. Now for Halloween, I'm definitely a big softie. I don't like anything scary. So these cookies are maximum cute. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a cute pumpkin wearing sunglasses, a ghost holding a candy corn, and a really cute spider on a spider web. Now each of these are going to be paired with an adorable stencil that is exclusive to the flower box. I'll show you how to make the coolest pumpkin in the patch, I'm just here for the candy, and too cute to spook. All of these essential cutters and stencils are available in the cute Halloween cookie decorating kit. You can find that on flowerboxbakery.com and it comes with all of the cutters and stencils that you'll see in today's video. Plus, check out the blog post for this tutorial. It has three free downloadable templates and three royal icing transfer pattern sheets that you can download. And I give you an icing guide for each of the projects. All right, are you guys ready to see these cookies? Let's cookie it up. I'm gonna start off with using my cookie projector. This is just gonna project the image onto the surface of the cookie so that I have a little bit of a guide as I spread a thin layer of black icing onto the pumpkin. And this is my favorite way to make pumpkins because it creates a more dimensional looking carved pumpkin. So we don't need a full layer of black icing, just a thin layer spread on with the spatula. And then using the guide from the projector, I can pipe the pumpkin's mouth and nose. Now you definitely don't need a projector to do that part. You can certainly freehand it because it's not a complicated decoration. However, I like the consistency that the projector provides. So if you have one, it is helpful to use it and you can use our free downloadable template on flowerboxbakery.com so that you can uh, match it up with this pumpkin shape that's in the kit. Now again, I am bringing back the projector to trace the outline of the lenses on the sunglasses. And the projector is super helpful with this, but I've also provided a royal icing transfer sheet with these glasses on it as well. So if you don't have a projector, you can make those lenses the day before and add them to the cookie while the orange icing is still wet. So I used a tip number 1.5 to outline the sunglasses. I flooded in the icing with black, and now I'm just adding some white highlights just to give the glasses a little pop and dimension. So the face of our pumpkin is done, and he's looking super cool. Now it's just time to add the details. I'm using a thin piping consistency to pipe a zigzag pattern for the pumpkin stem. And then I have a number two tip on my orange icing bag, and I'm just gonna add some pumpkin lines. This is such a time saver compared to flooding that pumpkin in phases to create those lines. So that's another way you can make these pumpkins, but just piping the lines certainly saves a lot of drying time. And then to finish off this cookie, I'm using tip number 67, this is a leaf tip, and I'm just gonna add that big leaf over the top of the pumpkin. It almost looks like his bangs, I think it's hilarious. Now I'm gonna show you how to stencil the coolest pumpkin in the patch, and this is the perfect match if you're making uh, cookie sets this Halloween. So I line up my stencil on a three and a half inch round cookie. I let that icing base dry for at least six hours because I'm putting pressure on the surface of the cookie. And then I'm using stiff black icing to stencil. And I'm just gonna make sure that I cover that stencil completely with the black icing. I'll remove the excess. It just gives you a cleaner looking image and then it also allows you to reuse your stencil multiple times. Usually I find I can reuse a stencil six to 12 times before I need to clean it and come back again. And then before I'm done with this round cookie, I'm going to add a piped outline and that just brings the cookie together and makes it a quick and easy pairing with our pumpkin, which took a little bit more effort. 
The second cookie set that I'm going to show you is a cute ghost that's holding a candy corn. And I'm gonna make these candy corns the day before I decorate cookies. So after I mix my icing colors, I'll make these royal icing transfers. And I just have the image sheet behind a piece of parchment. I'm using a tipless bag and 20 second icing. And I'm just using that transfer sheet as a guide as I fill in these candy corns. Then I'll let the candy corns dry overnight and after 12 to 18 hours, those candy corns, they just pop right off and they're great to use because they're a really consistent icing accent and you don't need a projector to do them. So I outline my ghost with a tip number two and I have my flood icing in my tipless bag. I'm just gonna flood in that ghost. I love to be generous with that base layer. And then I drop my candy corn transfer onto the wet icing. And you can give it a little nudge if it's not quite in the right place. Now I'm gonna use my airbrush. This is totally optional, but I'm gonna use my airbrush to add just a hint of blue, uh, maybe to make this ghost appear like it's translucent. So I mix pearl with Hawaiian blue. I'm using my airbrush gun on a low speed and light pressure just to control the airflow. And I just hit the edges of that cookie. I was worried about getting blue airbrush color on the candy corn, but that didn't happen because I kept my airbrush gun pointed directly down onto the cookie. And so the color really didn't blow anywhere else on the surface of that white. I did provide a template for this cookie. So if it helps you to use the template with your cookie projector, definitely download that on the blog post. But I'm just gonna freehand these arms. And sometimes I find freehanding a little bit challenging, but for these arms, I just kept in mind that they had the shape of a jelly bean. And so as I was flooding them in, I just kept to that curved jelly bean shape and overlapped the arms onto the candy corn. Then for the eyes, I'm using black and white flood. I'll flood the black eye on first and then I'll add two tiny dots of white for the catch light. I'm adding the black eyelashes and the smile with a food doodler marker. And it's so easy to put these markers through the surface of the icing. So definitely make sure that your cookie's been drying for at least four to six hours so that you can feel confident using that marker tip on the surface of the icing without poking through. Now it's the fun part. I'm just gonna pipe a few final details. And I love how the folds really kind of bring this ghost to life, make it look like it's floating. Again, I'm freehanding this because I've done it a few times, but if that's not in your comfort zone, certainly use the template to help guide those pipelines. Now I almost forgot, I wanna blush these cheeks. Sometimes adding that little blush cheek makes all the difference and takes the cookie to the next level. So now that I've showed you how to make this cute ghost, I'll show you how to stencil the I'm just here for the candy. Again, I'm on the round three and a half inch circle cookie. I'm using black stiff icing and I'm covering that stencil completely. And when I peel back the stencil, it's almost like peeling back a sticker. I wanna just gently remove the stencil so I don't smudge or shift any of the icing. And I'm ready to pipe my outline and that cookie is good to go. So we have set number two all ready to go. Now let me show you my third and favorite cookie set. This is going to be a cute spider on a spider web. And I've switched my tips on that black icing. I've switched to tip number three because I really wanna see that black outline on this cookie as part of this spider web design. I'm going to flood in completely with my white icing. And while it's still wet, I'm going to add some circles using my black icing. This is again the flood icing. And now it's time to do a little bit of marbling. I'm gonna take my scribe and pull that scribe through the icing at each point of the spider web. And to add just a little bit of extra cute, notice how I wiggle my scribe at the end and create a little curl. I just think that adds a little bit of whimsy to an already cute design. Now let's add this cute spider. And again, I'm gonna freehand this purple oval 
onto the spider web, but I did create a transfer sheet. If you want your spiders to be the same size from cookie to cookie, definitely create these spiders as a royal icing transfer. Let's take a close up look at making these eyes. This is a wet, on wet, on wet, on wet. I don't know if that's too many wets, but we're gonna start off with our white flood. Then we're gonna add green flood icing and a tiny dot of black flood. And all of those icings are going to melt down into one level and we're gonna add those little white catch lights. And it just creates this really dimensional, cute, big eye on these spiders. Now, if you don't wanna mix those extra icing colors, you can certainly make a simple face on this spider and it would still be super cute. But this style of eye definitely calls a lot of attention to that spider. I blushed her cheeks with some of the carnation pink and added a smile. And now I'm just piping her legs with a little teardrop of icing for the feet. We're almost done. I'm just gonna add a loop-de-loop -loop, uh, spider web for the spider as she's coming down off of her web. And that spider is definitely too cute to spook. So let me show you how to make the cookie that goes with this. Again, I'm using the three and a half inch circle with my stencil. I'm using stiff black icing and I'm gonna add an outline to the edge of the cookie. Now, if you wanna dress these cookies up a little bit, you can airbrush uh, an image on the background before you stencil the words. So I've done that on each of these cookies. You can see the comparison. And I just recommend when you do that, that you make sure the background isn't so distracting that you can't read the words. So notice I've used airbrush colors that are the same color as the background or on the white I've used silver. But it adds a really nice pop and pattern to those cookies. They work awesome packaged in a nine inch box together or you can put them all together as one big collection and all those colors are really playful and work off of each other. Now, I would be so flattered if you recreated these cookies, so tag me at Flowerbox Bakery or use hashtag Flowerbox Bakery on social media. I would love to see what you come up with. And if you're looking for those free templates and pattern sheets, check out the blog post at flowerboxbakery.com where we have all those freebies and more for you to use. That's all for today. As always, happy decorating.